This is the Van Gogh replay, and it's a synth sequencer and arpeggiator that can sound like this. It can sound like this. It can also sound like this. And this. And it can also sound like this. Replay was inspired by the Roland Juno and the Korg Poly 6 from the 80s, and it emulates an analog sound. So in this video, I'm gonna go pretty deep into how this thing works. I mostly use Replay as a sequencer because I really like the workflow, and I just really like using sequences in the compositions I create. So some other synths that I use to make sequences are the M32 by Moog, um, the Arturia Keystep, and the Eventide Misha, which are all great and I really like using but I genuinely think that replay is like the most approachable and the least frustrating way to make a sequence. You can obviously play replay like a regular keyboard. So it took me a couple minutes to get used to the keys and like the layout of this keyboard, just because it's kind of more squished together than a traditional keyboard. These are the octave up and down keys here. Replay is polyphonic and you can play up to six notes at once. But you can't play more than six notes. When getting started with the sequencer, all you really need to worry about are these three toggles right here. So if this toggle is down and you press a note, it just plays the note once. If this toggle is in the middle and you press a note, it sequences the note as long as you're holding it down. And if the toggle is all the way up, it will continue to sequence the note after you let the key go. When you add more notes in, the order they play in depends on this toggle. When it's in the center, it plays them in the order that you press them. When the toggle is up, it plays them up and down in pitch order. When the toggle is down, it plays them in a random order. When this toggle over here is down, it just keeps repeating the notes you press. When it's in the middle, it adds an octave and goes back and forth. And when the toggle is up, it adds two octaves. And when you start to add other notes, it starts to easily include a wider range of octaves. And again, you can put the notes in ascending and descending order. Or you can randomize them. This knob over here controls the speed. And you can also use MIDI to control the speed if you want. If you hold a chord, it'll arpeggiate those notes and open up a ton of possibilities. You can also send MIDI notes into this from your DAW, so if you want it to play something that the sequencer can't make, or if you want it to play something that you physically can't play with your fingers, this is how you would do it. And by doing this, you can free up your hands to adjust the settings on the synth, or adjust any effect pedals that this might be connected to. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to be sending one layer of MIDI notes through Replay, and I'm going to be sending another layer of MIDI notes through Replay, and this delay pedal.
So here's an example of using MIDI for something that you couldn't normally play with your hands. You can also use Replay purely as a MIDI controller if you want to. So I invited my friend Vines to come over and do just that. If you're getting to like a sharp or a flat, you kind of have to like crunch a little bit closer, but as long as you like know where you're going like it's fine like it feels different too yeah. and i feel like it looks cool like i know that should looks be a cool. factor but like that yeah. looks that looks cool i can do this exact same thing with a keyboard that looks like a regular keyboard yeah or i could do it with this and people will be like what's going yeah. oh on there God. is that the new vanga <laughs> <laughs> the biggest issue with replay when there's a mic nearby is how clacky the keys can get because they're mechanical keyboard switches. I went out and bought silent switches and I'm gonna replace the keys to see how quiet we can make it. This was the first time we did something like this and it took maybe 30 minutes. We were being really careful, but it was pretty simple. These were the quietest switches we could get for this and it was a big improvement, but honestly, I'm mostly going to be using replay for sequencing and direct in, so I wouldn't really have to worry about the noise from the keys. I did feel a big difference from these, but I just have to say that the keys weren't 100% silent. I'm going to leave one loud switch in there for reference and press them as light as I possibly can. Then I'll press with moderate force. Then I'll press with a lot of force. Imagine you have headphones on <laughs> and you're playing like a really complicated classical piece on your replay and this is what everyone else hears. <laughs> so now we're gonna dive deep into all these knobs and sliders on top. This section is the filter and it has five controls. Now I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Okay, this is sounding pretty good. So now I'm gonna play some harp over it. This is the LFO section, and as I start to make adjustments, you can hear some vibrato happening. All right, now I'm just gonna adjust the filter a little bit. This over here is the envelope generator. It has attack, decay, sustain, and release. Otherwise known as ADSR. It controls how the sound changes as the notes are played until they fade out. All right, so now I'm gonna change the speed again.
These three knobs control the oscillator. This toggle here changes the waveform of the oscillator. Up is sine, which is everything you've heard so far, and down is square, and the middle turns it off. You can access more waveforms with secondary functions or by using the web interface that they have. This knob here adds some noise. In the web interface, you can have noise controlled by an external input. So if you go on your computer and you type in replay.vongon.com, you can plug replay into your computer and access the online editor, which is one way to access some extra fun stuff. It's not really extra fun. It's just like you can access other stuff. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of fun, right? Like when you move a knob, you can see it on the editor moving. It's like a little ghost. Once you plug it in and start making changes on replay, you see it change on screen. It gives you a bunch of extra LFO waveforms, so I'm going to change it to triangle. And now square. And now ramp up. You also get two more oscillator waveforms. You can also change controls from the computer, but the knobs and sliders aren't automated, so they don't move with it. The noise knob can be changed to control the volume of another synth input into Vongon, like a drum machine. You can also change the voicing to make the synth monophonic. When you change it to mono mode, it's strictly one note at a time. In poly 1, the notes continue to arpeggiate when you hit new notes. In poly 2, the notes stop once you hit new notes. You can also use this to update the firmware, fine tune the pitch, and do some MIDI stuff. If you don't want to use the web editor, you can access the same settings by pressing this little button over here that says Alt, and then pressing certain keys. They have a little manual to tell you what the keys do. The cool thing about this is that you can save your parameters to presets for easy and quick access. I'm sure Replay will also have additional features available in the future when they do firmware updates. So some stuff that I would like to see is maybe like a reverse sawtooth waveform on the LFO, maybe an option to add rest in the sequences, and sustain pedal compatibility would be cool too. Thank you so much to Vongon for sending me the Replay and for sponsoring today's video. I honestly love this thing, so you're definitely going to see it a lot in future YouTube videos, so get ready for that. But what you're not going to see is you're not going to see the text on the <laughs> settings, because you can't. So it's just going to look like a blank keyboard, which is actually, like, low-key cool. really yeah, cool. Yeah. Like, from far away, there's no labels. Like, you can't you can't see labels from here, right? You know, when everything's labeled for you, you're like a little baby, like, at your computer, like, little, little baby, oh, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs>